Okay, so the last time I showed you how to create this nap over display project, today I will show you how to make it faster. Previously we were approaching around 10 FPS, now we are running at almost 3 times the speed around 30 FPS and the difference is really visible. So just a quick recap from the last time, I'm using Arduino Uno to drive the 128 by 64 pixel OLED display that is using the SSD 1306 chip and then I'm using a simple 10k potentiometer connected to the analog input A0 on the Arduino and I'm reading the value from the potentiometer and drawing the pixels on the screen. I'm using the UHG library and as you can see you can judge by the number of wires, I'm using the SPI connection for the display. You can also also use the I2C connection but keep in mind it might be a little bit slower. You have probably noticed that I'm using much bigger nap this time and this way I don't have a problem of moving the display as close to the nap as possible because with this big nap it's already covering most of the screen without me even trying. Same as the last time this nap is made from solid piece of aluminium and there is a small screw on the side of the nap which you use to tighten up the connection between the nap and the potentiometer itself. So this is the previous project running on the Wofki website, which is a free online Arduino emulator that we will be using this time as well. And as you can see down below, it's approaching 9 or 10 FPS. And although this is running in the browser, I found out that the numbers are kind of matching what I see on my Arduino. Actually, with the SPI connection, it will be a little bit faster on the real Arduino. So I did get a lot of comments saying that I should use the lookup tables. And that's a great suggestion, except I'm already doing this. So I'm using those two arrays to hold up the X and Y positions for the pixels. And it even says lookup table in here. I can do the same thing for the line, so, so keep the second point of the line and the positions of the text, but that will not affect the performance that much. So the biggest performance difference comes from the realization of how the UHG library is actually drawing stuff on the display. And for this, I will open the data sheet for the used chip, which is the SSD 1306. And if I open the block diagram, you can see that on one side of the chip, we have the connection to Arduino and there are quite a lot of different pins, but we are only using a few of those because the chip supports multiple different types of communication. On the other side of the chip, there are the individual connections for the, you know, each row and column for the display. But in between what's important, there is this part, which is a graphic display data RAM, which is GDD RAM. And this RAM is just big enough to hold the information for 128 by 64 pixel screen in one bit color depth. And what the chip is doing is updating the display with this data 60 times per second, which is great because you don't have to use your Arduino to do so. You can update the data in the RAM with Arduino at much slower speed. And you can set the content of the GDD RAM in a few different ways. And one particular way that the UHG library is using, it's called the page mode. So inside the page mode, the RAM is divided into pages and each page is 128 pixels wide by 8 pixels tall, which means that for the 128 by 64 pixel display, we need 8 different pages. And this is the part that I was puzzled with in the beginning with the UHG library. So you can see that inside the loop function, we have the UHG first page. That one basically means jump to the first page, which is a page number zero, then draw something and then, you know, use this command, which is UHG next page, which means, you know, then jump to the next page, which is page number one, two, and so on until you will reach the last page. So what does it mean? It means that everything inside the UHG loop is executed eight times, which means that all our calculations, which are also inside the loop, are executed eight times and it's slowing down the performance quite a lot. So the biggest improvement for the performance will be done by moving all the calculations or, or at least most of the calculations outside the drawing loop for the UHG and only keeping actual drawing inside there. So let's do it. I will select this block for calculating everything and just copy paste it outside the drawing loop, so outside the UHG loop like so. And just because we are outside the loop, we cannot draw it like so. So we have to comment out the UHG draw line, the UHG draw string and the UHG draw pixel. And instead of drawing this, we will store those values in some helper arrays. And then inside the drawing function, so inside here, we will use those values from the arrays to draw stuff. So we need those helper arrays. So let me just define a few more variables and let's just call this integer take a pixel position, for example, so tick, uh, tick pixel array, just so we need that this is the array and we need two dimensions. So the first one will be the actual pixel index. And I don't know how many pixels we need, maybe 50. And we need two values for the X and Y position. We also need to know how many pixels we want to draw. So I'll create a new one more variable called tick pixel count just like this. So in the beginning, I will set the tick pixel count equal to zero. So tick pixel count to zero. And I want to store those pixel X and pixel Y positioned inside our newly created array. So I'll just copy this one. And I will say that the first index will be actually the tick pixel count. Second index will be zero for X. And I will set equals 
pixel X and I will do the same thing for pixel Y except I will change the second index to one for the Y position. And of course, once I store the pixel, I want to increase the tick pixel count just so I keep track of how many pixels I have. I will say tick pixel count plus plus, which means increase the number Y1. So I'm storing those values. I just need to draw the pixels inside the UHG loop. So inside here, I will just say draw pixels and I will copy this piece for the loop and change it a little bit. So for integer Y equals zero, while the y is smaller than the tick pixel count, I will increase it by one, so y plus plus, and I will draw the pixels, and I can help myself by copying this piece of code, so draw a pixel. So for the pixel x, I will use this one, except I will change the first index to be the y from our loop, and for the second, for the pixel y, I will use this one, but again, I will set the first index to be y like so. So if I run the simulator again, I should see only the pixels, not the lines of the text, but the pixels should be drawing and we should see a little bit better FPS number, although this number will not tell us anything because we are not drawing everything right now. And surely that's the case. So let's just move on. Let's just do the same thing for the lines and the labels. So I'll create a new array that I will call tick line array. And I need a few of those lines, probably much fewer than the pixels, because at one point at the time, I'll probably draw like maybe five or six lines, probably even less. So 10 should be a good number just to have some space. And I need four different values for X, Y and uh, starting position and X, Y ending position. And in the very same way, I'll create also the integer value tick line count to keep the track of the number of lines. And for the text, I will use the very same thing. So new array called tick text array. Again, 10 labels should be probably more than enough. And I need three different values. So X, Y and the value. And I will create a new integer that will be the tick text count. So let's just do the very same thing that we've done to the pixels. So here we are drawing the line. Here we are drawing the string. So instead of drawing the line, we will actually save the position to the array tick line array. So I'll copy this piece and say tick line array, the first index will be the tick line count, the second index will be zero for the starting x position, which will be the line x. This second index will be one for the y position, so line y starting position. And the next two pieces, so the end x and end y position are actually stored in the pixel x and pixel y. So I'll just copy pixel x and pixel y and set the indexes appropriately, so one, two, two and three. And then we want to increase the tick line count by one, just like we've done with the pixel and make sure that the tick line count is set to zero in the beginning of the loop. So equals zero. Then in the drawing function, we just copy this piece like so. We will rename it to draw lines for integer y equals zero while it's smaller than the tick line count. I'll increase it by one. And then of course I will draw the line. So I'll just copy this piece, draw line like so and use those stored values from tick line array. So I'll just copy this first piece, put it in here, set the first index to be Y from our loop and then just increase the second index to one, two and three. So just copy this one, set this to one, which is the start Y position, set this to two, which is the end X position and set this to three, which is the end Y position. And if I rerun the simulation, I should see also the lines, which is exactly the case. So let's just move on to text. The labels should be simple and straightforward. So instead of drawing the string in here, again, we will store the values and we already have the array. So I'll copy this thick text array in here and I will say that the first index is of course the tick text count. So tick text count for the first one. And the second index will be zero for X position. So I will store the text X inside this. And for the second index one, I will store the text Y. And finally for the text count, second index of two, I will store the actual value. So I will store the tick value inside here like so. And then I will of course increase the tick text count by one like this and make sure that the tick text count in the beginning of the loop is set appropriately to zero. So inside the drawing, I'll draw the text. So I'll copy this piece. I will say draw text and I will increase it until the Y is smaller than the tick text count. Like so tick text count comment out this piece as well, because I don't want to convert this to buffer yet. And I want to copy all three lines into our drawing function. So I'll copy all three lines into the drawing function and uncomment those. And the only difference will be that we will not be getting the tick value, but instead we'll be getting the value from the array. So this piece, so this is the tick value. Of course, the first index should be Y. 
and as for the text x this is also stored in the array so text is this this piece so text is text x is this piece the first index is y and the text y is this so first index is y the second index is one and that should be just enough to also display the labels and that's exactly the case and as you can see we are at the same place where we were in the beginning as for what we are displaying on the display but now we are running at around 16 frames per second so there is quite a bit of improvement as for the performance which is only done by moving some of the calculations outside the drawing loop of the UHG library as you can see the performance is even better when using the SPI connection for the display so in this case I'm approaching around 20 FPS for normal values and around 25 FPS when I'm on the ending or beginning of the tick marks. Let's see if we can optimize it a little bit more. So let's take a look at the simplest passive example. So for example, this line, it's drawing the logo on the top right corner. Now we've already said that the chip is dividing the memory into eight different pages. And it's obvious that this logo is only being drawn on page one. However, by placing this inside the loop, we are executing this eight times. So we are executing this for every single page. Now, of course, the UAG library is smart enough to know that it shouldn't be drawing anything for page one through page seven, but there is still some CPU overhead, although probably not that big. Let's Let's take a look at another example and it is this drawing this big value on top which is this one again the similar case but this time we are seeing the font we are converting the fold to string adding some random characters and calculating the straight width we are doing all of this eight times per frame while you know we only need to do this maybe for page zero and one probably so what we can do is we can get the uag library a little bit of helping hand and say that if we are on a certain page we will draw certain elements we need a new variable that will keep track of the current UHG page and I will call this current UHG page. And what we want to do is we want to set it to zero in the beginning of the drawing loop. So I will try to find the first page and right after that I will set it that the current UHG page equals zero. And I want to increment this value with every loop. So right before I switch to the next page, I want to say that the current UHG page plus plus equals, you know, plus one. So I believe that the most CPU intensive task is drawing those pixels, lines and text. And we can guess that maybe, you know, it shouldn't start on page zero and it's probably not touching the last page, which is page number seven. So we can try to add the small if statements, only draw the, those elements if the page is bigger than zero and smaller than seven. So let's just do this for those elements. I'll add a new if statement. So if the current page is bigger than zero and, and the current page is smaller than seven, only then I will draw those elements. Let's retry the simulation and see what values we get. And as you can see, it's slightly faster. Previously, we were getting 16 FPS. Now we are getting something around 16 or 17 FPS. But in order to continue with this approach, we need to know which elements are on which pages. And for that, I will use the online photo editing tool called Photopia, which is almost like a Photoshop, except it's being developed by a completely different person, not related to Adobe in any way. So what I will do is I will make my code as small as possible and make my display as big as possible. And then I will press Alt print screen to print screen the browser window, jump into Photopia and create a new document. So file new, hit create, and then I will control V to paste my snapshot image. I want to crop it to the size of the display. So I will zoom in just a little bit like so and select the crop tool, which is this one and just crop it from the left top to the right bottom, like, like so hit enter on my keyboard and now it's being cropped. Now I want to get this to the right size. So I'll select image, image size and set this to 128 by 64 pixels which is the correct size. If I zoom in, you can see that some pixels are a little bit blurred. That's fine. We can just fix it by adding a new threshold effect. So click on this half fill circle and select threshold and we will get only black and white values just like we have on the display. So we need to measure which pages or which elements are on which pages. So in order to do so, I will create a new layer hitting this new layer button, select this rectangular selection tool and select the rectangle sized 128. So all the width of the screen by eight pixels like so and i will fill it by some random color i'm hitting alt backspace but i can also do edit fill which is the very same comment i will hit 20 on my numpad to or maybe 30 to lower the opacity you can also use this slider in here to set the opacity of the layer so maybe 30 or 40 is fine i will duplicate the layer by dragging it with alt key on my keyboard pressed like so just so it's below and fill it with a different color or i can just simply press ctrl y to invert the colors so this is the page number zero page number one I will select both layers and keep duplicating those by dragging those with the alt key pressed until I will fill the entire screen with those lines. And those lines of course means pages. 
So this page 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Just so we are on the same page, I've also added those small text indicators for individual pages. And so now it should be very obvious that the you know, FPS indicator is running on page 0 and 1, but we can probably move it a little bit more to the top to only be visible on page 0. The logo is only on page 0, and the big text in the middle is only taking place on page 0 and 1. So let's just update the code to reflect this. I will jump to the code, make the display again a little bit smaller, and make my source a little bit bigger like so and let's actually get rid of this line because we will change it in the near future and start with this fps indicator the logo and the top big text in the middle so the logo and the fps indicator should only be drawn on page zero so we can say that if the current page equals zero then we will draw the logo and the fps indicator up down here and we should move the fps indicator a little bit to the top so draw string should not go to the y position of 10 but maybe only eight let's just quickly restart the simulation to see if we can still see the fps indicator and we do which is nice so for the big text on top we can say we only want to draw this if the current page is either zero or one so if it's smaller than two so if it's smaller than two we'll draw this big text on top i will just put a closing bracket in here and indent everything again try to rearm the simulation to see if we are not missing anything and not only we are not missing anything but the fps number jumped from 16 all the way up to 18 which is nice uh, let's take care of the pixels the lines and the labels in a very similar way so if i open photopia we can probably tell that pixels are going only between pages two and four the lines are going between pages two and and five and the labels are going between pages two and six so let's just quickly update the code so again the pixels are only going between pages two and four the lines are only going between pages two and five closing bracket in here and just put a little bit of indentation and finally the text the labels are going between pages two and six again put a closing bracket in here a little bit of indentation and rerun the simulation and it should look the same except now we are seeing 20 frames per second or almost 20 frames per second to run this on the arduino i will just paste the code inside the arduino ide and since i'm using the spi display i will comment out the i c connection and uncomment the spi connection and then just press the upload button and hopefully everything will be fine and as stated previously, with the SPI connection, it's actually running even faster, approaching somewhere between 25 to 30 frames per second. Let me show you one more thing, and that is the same project running on a slightly smaller display, but using the same chip and same resolution, but this time connected using the i c connection. And I actually have more of those in the different colors. And what's particularly interesting is the one where the colors are yellow and blue. And it's just coincidence or perhaps luck that the big value is displayed over the yellow while the rest of the stuff is displayed over the blue area. But it surely looks nice. I mean, it's a little bit of luck because I believe that the 16th line is actually not being displayed on the display, but we are not showing anything on this particular line. And it's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. If you have any questions or comments, please put those down in the comment section. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.